Hi guys and welcome back to Midday Matcha with Livy. Clearly I am fucking Livy. You guys, I do have a special guest with me today. Say hello. Hi guys. You can't be moving around a lot because they'll be picking up all of that. Got it, got it. Anyways, you guys, if you heard that yourself, it is Timothy John Patrick in the building. Hi guys. Oh, thank you. Thank How are you, you doing? Tim, quick, like couple questions before we get into the episode. Okay. Do you listen? Of course I listen. <laughs> I you don't. Big friend. No, you don't. And that's okay. None of my friends listen. And I listen to them sometimes. It depends on what I'm talking about. Yeah. And like, I'll also sometimes will like skip through. What? <laughs> because, okay, let's be honest. You tell me everything in your life. So yeah. Like, I don't have to hear everything for a third time. Okay. You know? I got it. Just that. to be fair. But I do, I do try to listen at least, like, like get the gist of it. Audio listeners, if you're listening to this and you're like, this audio sucks, we know. We're we're aware. We're not in studio, but I will be in studio next week, you guys. So, yeah. You got a new one? Yeah. Like... You would know that if we weren't fighting. Um, oh. Tim, <laughs> Tim and I were fighting the past week. Nothing serious. Nothing like... Past week? It was like two it days. It was a week. It, it was, was a week. not a week. Okay, it was a couple of days. But it was hard for me. <laughs> It actually no, was. You. We also I mean, weren't you know, fighting. We just like we were speaking. just yeah. We just were not talking, which is not like us. Not we like just us. talk every day, all yeah, day. Like she Facetimes me like five times a day. Probably usually. yeah. I'm like, what? You work, and I'm like, that's disgusting. Right. Anyways, um, because I just need my Tim time, but we're better now. Okay, you guys, we're gonna do. You guys already know like what would Livy do. Now it's what would Livy and Tim do. So I have your guys' voicemails. I've had so many that I didn't listen to, and we're gonna listen to them today. And sorry, I just like needed to make sure I looked good. Anyways, we're going to listen to them today and we're going to give you our advice because I'm like, who better? And we're going to have like such different advice, I feel like, for some of these because I've listened to some of them. I don't remember which ones I picked, but. I haven't listened to any of them. No, Tim doesn't so know what the fuck is happening. For me, yeah. Okay, here we go. Ready? Let's get into it. Do you have any advice for starting acting at a young age? That's great for us. Perfect starting question. <laughs> okay, I'll go first. <laughs> My advice is just get into acting. Wait, no, <laughs> wait, wait. My advice is just to take classes. Like I, if you have like an acting school near you, like I did the Second City right when I was interested in acting or even your high school will probably have acting classes, get into them. But I feel like you're gonna have great advice. Yes, um, I have been acting since I was in like third grade. Like I started taking just acting classes at like my local community theater. Um, and like, I, would wa- I wanna say like third grade. That's how I started in it. Like, I was not good or, like, I didn't love it at first either. I just kind of was, like, trying something. Because it takes a while to get into it. You yeah, know? Like, it does. Especially if you're on the shyer side. Like, I'm not shy anymore, but I used to be shy. When you're first starting out, I feel like everybody is shy, you know? Yeah, that's true. But I feel like a lot of ki- a lot of kids get put into theater class because their parents are, like, oh, they're crazy. Like, let me just, like, shove them into a theater class and, like, see what happens. Right. I was just like, I don't even really know why exactly I got started in it. You're going to yeah. need to speak up. Okay. Sorry. Um, why exactly I got started in it. But yes, I would recommend just like taking classes at like your local theater, auditioning for your high school plays, like auditioning for any community theaters near you. Um, yeah. I started with classes and I took like a year of classes. And then in fifth grade, I just started doing musicals at like my my um, local community theater. I feel like nobody knows this about us. Like... My real passion in life is like comedy and acting. It's not making TikToks all day, but I do. It, it's a good stepping stone. And like you're trained in like I'm Second City trained. You're also Second City trained. But you're also like you went to U Miami for acting. Yeah, musical theater. I right? also went to college for musical theater, which is like a whole nother ball game. Which I don't even want to get into right now. Cause no, because I like... don't give a fuck. No, I'm kidding. Okay. So, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a whole other thing. I can't even get started in that. Like, if you want to ask me about college auditions, that's all. We'll that's a, a whole, that's yeah, literally a whole different thing. I do want the comedy route, so it's like completely different. But it's just like getting out there, getting into it, doing the damn thing. And you like, if you're not pushing yourself, if you're not doing things that don't, if make you're you, not uncomfortable, if you're not, yeah, if you're not pushing yourself to do things that that make you uncomfortable, then you're not going to grow. You're not going to learn. You're not going to find things that you love. You know, like I was uncomfortable when I first started acting and now I'm trying to make a career out of it. Like I've been doing it for, I don't know, over 10 years and I went to college for it. I got my degree in musical theater. So you'll never know until you try. Oh, fully agree. And yeah. So the next one, okay, let's get into it. Gigi. You do 
if you dated a guy for five months and you were like so in love with him because he was your first love ever and y'all fucked and then you realized that he was cheating on you the entire time with somebody that is like the exact opposite of what you look like and then you guys break up and he tells you that you're mentally draining and that you are overweight and that you're a bitch and starts body shaming you and then you decide one day back in March, this is like six months later, hmm, I'm gonna date him again. So you start talking to him again and then he calls you and the first thing he says to you is, you know that girl that I cheated on you with? Yeah, I fucked her. <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> Wait. Loaded question. <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let's, un- let's unpack. If you guys are not watching the video of this, watch the video because our responses to that were like <gasps> our reactions. Our reactions. Um. Okay. Gagisha. In general, like I just would not. You you brought this up to me the other like actually we were at Daddy's and we were getting dinner. That it's a restaurant a in New ago. York. Yeah. But remember we were talking about my one friend and you were like we're at the age where we should have so much more self respect than to just like put up with the bare fucking minimum. Right. We don't know how old this girl is. No, but let's fair. just like assume she's like let's just say twenties in general. No, honestly in general I feel like you should be once you're like past eighteen years old like you should have enough respect for yourself like you're an adult to have uh to get yourself out of these positions and I'm not like attacking you girl I love you I get it it's hard but like I don't know you said that to me and it really just resonated with me so well at when we were at daddy's and <laughs> it's a restaurant you guys we were at a restaurant, it's a restaurant, it's a restaurant. and but to play devil's advocate with that though like some people don't have these experiences with men where they get like brutally traumatized by yeah. men until like later in their life and that's completely natural like everybody starts their dating journey later on so it just honestly really takes <laughs> this sucks, but it really takes like getting your heart broken multiple yeah. times to, for you to like learn these lessons. Like I got my heart broken, I would say like three, four, five times before I like started holding myself to a higher level. You're actually right. And now I'm going to double da- back down and be like, okay, that's a really good point because like even with my last heartbreak, it's like I still let yeah, myself and get... and you were 23 when yeah, that happened. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't as bad as, like, other situations. And, like, right. I didn't go back, I think, is the biggest thing. But it is hard to, like, walk away. It did take you a minute to let go, though. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. I started fucking my coworker, and we were fine. And right. I feel and like that... And then that went downhill as well, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it did, and it did. But that, now I'm good. Right, yeah. I've had a couple little breakups. But each... But, like, the point of it is, though, is, like, each time this happens with, like, a new man, like, you get fucked over by another man. What else is new? Men are shit. Men are but shit. But each time it happens, you learn things along the way that you can apply to the next time. And sure, the next time, maybe you won't be, like, perfect. Like, maybe you won't be like, fuck this man. He's out. I'm done. Cut him off. No yeah. ties. But each time, I feel like you get quicker with it. You get better at it. And you have a lower tolerance for, like, lower dumb tolerance. assholes. Yeah. And that's a great point. But honestly, though, like, that man sounds like shit. He yeah, sounds he like sounds a like a fucking child. asshole. The way that he's body shaming you, the way that he's calling you a bitch, like, he's projecting on you because you're probably a mature, beautiful young woman. Thank and you. And he knows... Not me. <laughs> I just meant it. Thank you for telling her that. And he knows that he's not shit compared to you. Yeah, he, know- a lot he of clearly men, knows. A lot of men, something I've learned very recently is a lot of men are extremely insecure because they don't have, like the ability to look inward and, like, deal with their own insecurities and their own trauma. And so a lot of the time they will project that onto the person that they are seeing. Oh, 100%. So a lot of the time they will see somebody who is more mature, more emotionally in tuned, more aware than them, more confident than them, and they will be feel so insecure and so small compared to them that they will project and, like, put down that other person to make them feel better about their own insecurities. They will try and bring you down. Like, I've always said that the only people that are going to insult we've you... we've always said that. We've always said that. Um, the only people that are going to, like, bring you down and, like, actively try and bring you down are people who are insecure and lower than you. So, Correct. just keep that in mind. Okay, nice. You do if you're dating somebody for three years, but recently have been thinking about your ex. <laughs> it's giving... I'm going to bleep it. I'm going to bleep it. But it is giving that. <laughs> um, you start with that. I... Um, no, because I'm like crazy where I'll be like, yeah. you have a spiritual connection with your ex. Yeah, you know what I mean? But crazy. maybe that's just a sign that you're not happy in your current relationship. Because like, 
if I think about an ex when I'm in a relationship, it's normally because I'm not happy in the relationship that I'm in. Like if I'm thinking of other people, it's normally because I want to get out. Knowing me and myself, that's right. normally what I will do. And also on top of that, like if this man was your first love, there is something about your first love that will never leave your mind. Um, like you'll always feel like a weird connection Pull. to yeah. that. Whether or not that person was like good to you or like whatever. But if it was your first love, especially like you kind of will always have like some sort of lingering something for them just because like, I feel like the first time you experience love, it's just like, yeah, in a way you kind of always like, compare it to that. Okay. Well now I want advice personally because I've been struggling with this <laughs> recently, <laughs> but like, I think like after I'm done with a relationship, like I think about all my exes and I'm like, I just like don't give a fuck about them and I don't care about them at all. And I don't have anything that pulls me back to them. Well, that's good because they're shit. Yeah. But, like, I even think about, like, my first love, and I'm, like, was that even my first love? Because, but like, the heartbreak, it was my first love. Because I'm, like, I think he could die, and I'd be, like, okay. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't care. Yeah. I think our situations are a little, a lot different, though, because, like, as we know, like, I have a tendency to, like, catch feelings from my friends. And so they were already, like, a big part of my life before any sort of, like any of that happened yeah so for me it's hard there we go there's a whole nother level added to it okay yeah because then you're also grieving a friendship which is like horrible right double breakup double breakup and we hate a double breakup okay hey Libby so I'm having this really big ass problem with my boyfriend because he is this freaking hot shot basketball player that everyone loves like all of the girls love him and then we've been dating this whole senior year, basically. We went to Hoka together. We've been through shit together this whole year. And throughout the year, all of his ex hookups, all of his ex girls, all of the fans, like he literally has fucking like girls fans because he everyone loves him. So they all hate on me because I'm dating him. So they treat me like crap. Like they treat me like I'm disgusting. My body's disgusting. My face is disgusting. Like I'm literally the, like the bitch that like the side bitch that's fucking hated by everyone and I always try to come up to him about this because I hate being treated like that especially because first of all I feel like I'm not ugly at all I feel like I'm not fucking disgusting at all and I feel like I'm also pretty hot shot too because I'm varsity track and like the captain so I don't even know why I'm fucking getting hate at but um I always try to come up to him about this and he always brushes it under the table and being like no, it doesn't matter. They're just playing around when in reality, bro, those bitches push me in the halls and treat me like crap every single fucking day of my life. So, I don't know what to do about this because if not, if he's not going to say anything about it, what... Okay. Okay, first, first off, yeah. how can you hate from the outside of the club if you, you can't, can't even, even get, get in? in. Let's, let, me, let me just start with that. They're jealous of you. Let's oh, just put 100%. That out but second of all, if my man is not defending me, like if my man, if some girl's like, your girlfriend's whack as fuck, and if he's not punching her in the face, you know what I mean? He's not worth it. He's not worth it's it. It's giving Justin Bieber it's, in the worst way. It is giving Justin Bieber. Like if Justin Bieber <laughs> not like defending hate, like if I was Justin Bieber, I would get on the internet like, fuck all of you. I love Haley. Right. And that's that. Because that's a good boyfriend. Because that's what that's a good what, like, a a husband, like if, no, like if my boyfriend is genuinely not like defending the fuck out of me at all times and trust me i'm someone that needs to be defended because i'll probably do things that are just like crazy um then i don't want you yeah 100 percent. and like i don't give a fuck what you're because like let's talk about egos we both have egos of course. especially me <laughs> like i have a fat ego and it's hard to and like clearly this guy has an ego um because he thinks he's like all oh, that kind of thing you know and it's like he could be and that's totally fine but he still has to have respect for you mm-hmm he also uh, definitely 100% is just, like, living and basking in the attention. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure that's a whole part of it as well. But all that to say, like, it's not an excuse. We all like attention. But he should be a good boyfriend and a good supportive boyfriend to you at the end of the day. Yeah. And if he can't give that to you, then I think you need to have a conversation with him and set him down and be like, I feel this this way and that way and this way and that way and I don't feel supported by you. I don't feel like you're sticking up for me. So either you, things have to change, you're going to have to change your behavior moving forward or we're not going to be. We're done. Cut out. And that's that. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know what is your advice and what would you do to block out bullies and how people just don't support you. Okay. 
I'm taking that as hate online. Um, cause that's like the bullies that I deal with are just, and you do yeah, too. It's just like, bullies. yeah, the haters online, the way I would, or people in general who don't support me, I cut the people out of my life that don't support me. I very much have a circle of everyone who supports me like 125% and like you've seen it firsthand. I will cut people so quickly if you don't support me. Um, how do you deal with hate? Um, I think... It's- I think it's hard. This is a loaded question, but I think number one, you need to remind yourself that people are only hating on you because you have something that they want. Yeah, that's so, a very good point. Because I've been receiving a lot of hate things recently. And- yeah, and like people see people who have success. People who see people people see people who are gorgeous and talented, and they're jealous. And they're they're jealous. jealous. And we've always said that. But no, seriously though, like. I always try to remind myself, A, that people are only hate on you because they're jealous of something that you have. B, you're gorgeous. B, you're gorgeous, which is something that you have. Yeah. <laughs> C, um, that person is extremely insecure and doesn't know how to deal with their own insecurities that they have to project them on other people. So pretty much they are just like too immature to be able to deal with their emotions rather than just like sitting there observing that they feel jealous for some for some way for yeah. some reason and dissecting that and trying to find like the inner reason of why they're jealous and why they feel the need thousand to tear other percent. people down thousand percent it's n- always hey, then I was sorry. wondering if you could give me some Pause. advice on it whether I can it's always them, not you. That's another thing. Like, when people are hating on you, it's never your problem. It's their problem. So always remind yourself when people are trying to, like, tear you down that it's them and not you. Yeah. My friends, we recently just got close this year, and I never really knew her before then. And we have most of our classes together, and we sit next to each other in every single one. But recently, she's been, like, body shaming me and trying to like put me down i think it's just so that that's the same thing of what we just said i think the same thing applies yeah like fuck but body shaming is never okay no never Never. it's like at the end of the day we both are insecure about our bodies and have both like deal with disordered eating and all the nine yards yeah and like at the end of the day like we cope with comedy so like we just like like to like fuck around with each other to make light of dark feelings and dark things that have happened in the past this looks like an apology video i was like (laughs) (laughs) um but yeah anyways body shaming is not okay no you need to bring that up to her because that is never okay especially not okay from a friend no that's not a friend yeah okay so i am a huge fan of yours so i'm like if you even see this i'm gonna be dead on the floor honestly anyways So, I need some advice about just not caring of what others think. Because, for me, like, growing up, half of my life I've always been insecure. So, it's hard for me just to flip a switch. Do you have any advice that anything I could do, like journal or something? And how should I do that? Thanks if you see this. And I hope you do. Have a good day, baby. Hi. I love you. I want you to know I love you so much. Um... My biggest advice is... We've kind of, like, already touched on this, but, yeah, continue. Like, fake it till you make it. Like, that's just all fake I... Fake it till you make fake it. Fake it till you make it. Um, yeah. Confidence comes from... Within. Within. And a lot of the time... <laughs> On set, Timothy? So On set? No, answer for the class. <laughs> Who is it? Hello? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we, we will be there. We will be there. Yes, thank you so much. Bye bye. It's our reservation. It's okay, I, valid, valid. Stop looking at the phone. All right, you guys. Um, it's gonna trigger me. What, I said no phones on set. Um, yeah, just fake it till you make it. Yeah, love fake it yourself. Till you make it. Um, yeah, it's really hard. It just like comes with time. It does. Especially, I don't know. There is always something that you will be insecure about. Whether, always. Whether you seem like you're the most confident person in the world, like this one. I still um, have body dysmorphia. Right. Like as do I. Like we right. have insecurities, even though we may come off as confident. Like we still have those insecurities. Yeah, just like a couple insecurities. I would say just like one specifically for me. <laughs> like it's honestly just I would be unstoppable if it wasn't for the body dysmorphia. I swear <laughs> to God. Like I Timothy, I would be so unstoppable. You have no, a, that's yeah. not. We've always said that. We've always said that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This is a whole separate game, but like Growing up gay. I thought you were talking. Sorry, go on. 
Whoa, that was really. I thought you were checking your watch, and I was like, "Are you fucking kidding?" Okay, go on. Fixing my bracelet. Anyways, growing up gay in a heteronormative society, like, teaches you that there is something wrong with you, but not that this. Maybe this is. Maybe this is what you're talking about. Maybe you are queer in some way. I don't know. But speaking from my own experience. We have been raised in a society that teaches us that you have to look a certain way, act a certain way, do certain things to be accepted by society. And one way that I have like really coped with getting over my insecurity and being gay was that like you have to realize that being this is like very specific, so I don't know if you're queer or not. Just go, is... just speak your heart, okay, and so I want to hear it. Yeah. Um. Essentially, what I was about to say was like you need to look at your quote unquote flaw for me being gay as a gift rather than a flaw because if you have like a certain thing that makes you different a certain like quality about you whether that be physical whether that be on the inside whether that be your sexuality anything it sets you apart and it is your superpower because if you have things that set you apart from different people that immediately gives you a different perspective on the world that a lot of other people do not have so you need to look at things certain things that you might be insecure about as a gift instead of a flaw because it offers you so much more perspective so much more wisdom so much awareness that a lot of other people will never have the chance to get yeah i was gonna say like were you saying that like when you as soon as you said notice like making your flaw like the thing that's special about you Mm -hmm. i've this is like so not comparable but i've been making like my ocd instead of like dealing with it and like suffering in silence i'm like let's joke about it on tiktok kind of thing and i think that's super important Mm -hmm. but i really that was so powerful but yeah cope with comedy that's like my big thing always is like just make light of dark situations um because if anything you want to be funny because if there's anything, <laughs> no, like what I like, I mean, like if you have certain things that you're insecure about, if you have certain just things be that funny. people make fun of you about, turn that pain into fucking comedic gold and make people laugh. Because once you have a personality, like a golden personality, like us, later on down, later on down the line, once you glow up and you become gorgeous, <laughs> then you have the best personality and you're gorgeous. So it's like the best of both worlds. No, and you'll make money off of it. Of course, but yes, <gasps> cope with comedy because that's like the best way to deal with it. But also cope with your feelings, like write them down and like, of course. but like properly cope, but then like journaling, laugh. write them out, really observe how you're feeling before you act on it. But yeah. yes, like with time, you will just, you will develop a sense of humor. 100%. So I was together with this guy for about maybe four months. And when he was first with me, he was like so obsessed and I was love bombing me. I met his family within like a week or two. Like he was so obsessed with me. But then he, um, we broke up and then I made him promise me not to fucking move on for a year. And my best friend found him on a dating app two weeks later. What the fuck does that mean? That means that he does not give a fuck. Because here's the thing. Like... First of all, don't ever make anybody be, like, single for a year. Like, I don't really like that. That's just, like, not... Like, I don't like that at all. Um, Not that that, like... Yeah. I just, like, yeah. And But then second of all... Yeah. You can... Long story short, if he doesn't want to commit to you, he's not the one. So don't make make him, like, wait on the sidelines for you. Once he shows you his true colors, he's shown you his true colors. If he was the one, he wouldn't have done that in the first place yeah <sighs> great point Libby so I am talking to this guy and he's like not cute at all he's not cute he's ugly and his personality isn't the best either but like he's a really fun person to be around and I feel really comfortable around him should I pursue it or should I just like ghost him no, girl. Run while you're ahead. Run while you're ahead. Run while you're ahead. Because here's the thing. They don't get hotter to you, and they don't get funnier or get a pers- better personality to you. Trust me. Like, keep him as a friend. Keep him as want. a friend. Like, tr- I promise you, he is not going to just magically become hot one day. They never do. Very true. Also, one thing, like, growing up that is sometimes hard is, like... Uh, deciphering the difference between platonic and romantic You are so right, and I struggle with it all the time because I think all everyone's my soulmate. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can I can really speak on that because yeah. I've, like... No, but let's, you can't either. But no, like, but, like, let's speak on it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, something that I've 
I don't, it's just like a pattern in my life. I always fall for my friends, um, which doesn't usually end well. Um, but my point in this is that sometimes it's really hard to decipher the difference between platonic and romantic relationships. It's so difficult. And like one time I fucked my friend and it was my coworker. (sighs) Okay. And I did. And like, it ruins the friendship. And Mm -hmm. the thing is like, you have to decide what is more important to you, the friendship or like getting off. No, but like just, I don't, you really have to decide because it's like, you're losing a friend. Like, and I really want to emphasize on that because like growing up, it's someone that you're like, oh my God, this could be my soulmate. This is like amazing. I love this person. Is like, they're genuinely just better off your friend. Yes. But let me like, going off of that though, (laughs) it is a good quality to have in you because Yes, it can cause you pain, and yes, it can cause you to, to lose people who once meant a lot to you. I have lost three best friends because of complications between, like, romantic, platonic, not being able to tell the difference. Anyways, I have lost two best friends, three best friends because of that. But my point is, is that I do like to look at that as although I have, that has caused me a lot of pain and a lot of confusion and a lot of loss. In the end... It is a good thing to be able to recognize that you want to be with somebody who feels like your best friend. You know what I mean? So, like, they always say to, like, date your best friend or to marry your best friend and to fall in love with your best friend. Walk, walk, tread lightly. Tread um, lightly. (laughs) Because, like, you know, like, I've had a lot of fucking trauma because of that. But also at the same time, like, now I know that I do need to... If, when I do find the person I'm meant to spend the rest of my life with, like, they need to be my best friend. You yeah. know what I mean? Not and you they, know what that feels like. And I know what that feels like. And, like, I have felt, you know, instances of that in my past relationships. And, like, no, those past people were not the right people for me. But, like, I guess it is kind of comforting just to know that, like, there are people out there that will feel like your best friend. But also you want to, like fuck the shit out of that yeah (laughs) and that's growth balance balance hi Libby so I don't know how to put this in better words other than I wanna kind of fuck my best friend um we were boyfriend and girlfriend before we broke up like two months ago we are best friends still we are very close And we kind of do want to do, do it, you know, with What did we just say? (laughs) Like, what did we just say? The timing of it all for me. Yeah. I'm not repeating what I just said. So that's perfect. Yeah. Like rewind. (laughs) My boyfriend and I of three years broke up three months ago and we were on and off for those three years and so when we broke up this last time i went out when i hooked up with people you know like obviously like you do and the first person that i hooked up with he has the best stick i'm ever gonna have anyone's ever gonna have like it is so amazing Period. and but then my boyfriend of three years came back he was like i want to get back together and don't get me wrong i love him like i do but I don't love his sex. <laughs> like, I, how am I supposed to go back to him? I did this. And I knew you were going to... I have... Like, I did no, this. Ahead. Like, I broke up with my college boyfriend. And I went and I had the best sex of my entire life. Like, I called him KJ in my story time on TikTok. And it was the best sex I've ever had. And my biggest regret to this day is not keeping KJ as a fuck buddy and going back to my ex-boyfriend. Like, I regret that. Like, I regret going back to a fucking loser. I'm not saying your boyfriend's a loser. But I regret personally going back to a fucking loser after I just experienced life-changing sex that I will probably never experience again in my life for average dick and a loser man. So if I was you, I would go with the good dick. It'll cause you a lot less stress, and that's just the way to go. But on the other side of that, yes, that is completely correct, valid, whatever. But at the same time... If you love him, sex can be improved. Sex can be corrected. If it's a penis thing, <laughs> obviously you can't grow your fucking penis. Like your penis is this is how big it is. Like it's not gonna get any bigger. But you can teach them how to do certain things and use certain things 
that make you feel a certain way. Like you can correct them, you can teach them to help you feel better in bed, you know? And if you do love him, like sex can be corrected. It can be approved upon, it can be taught. To a certain degree. Once you find that magic penis, don't let it go. That's what I'm gonna say. Like I miss KJ to this day. Like I swear to God, I should have made like a relationship with him. Not actually, I get being in love with somebody because I was in love with somebody after I had bomb dick. And it's, you do have to go back and let me, here's my biggest tip of advice. Don't tell him that you had great sex. Cause I did that thinking we were open, honest and fun. Yeah. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't, don't tell him. Zon, 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 zon. So I have a little mom. I have three boyfriends, right? And I don't know what to do. So I just keep bleeding all three of them all. Cause you know, one of them has the other one lax and like whatnot. So. Should I keep my three boyfriends or do I pick one? <laughs> Honestly, girl, go the fuck off. Um, if you can emotionally handle it, go crazy. But also at the same time, as somebody who has been led on so much in my life, it really sucks being that person. But also at the same time, men are shit and sometimes they deserve to be hurt. So, I don't know. <laughs> they do. You're right. Like, I don't know, tread lightly. It's so, like, what do I sorry. do if, like, this man introduced me to his parents and everything, and we, like, hung out a bunch, but he actually doesn't, like, live in the same state as me, but he comes down here, like, all the time because his parents live down here. I'm in Florida, by the way, but he lives in Cincinnati, and, like, but he literally introduced me to his parents and, like, shit, and he comes down, like, all the time. Like, what the fuck do I do? do like it's like low-key like we're like fucking like dating but we're like not because he like lives in ohio so like hell distance is hard distance is hard but if it's the right person it'll they'll work make out. it fucking work mm-hmm. that's the thing like if it is the right person they will make it fucking work so if they're not then like look at that good riddance yeah i just think you need to have a conversation be honest be upfront. be like this is how i view this i see this going somewhere but yeah, long distance is hard. It's really like up to the people who are in the relationship because if you're not committed 120% to making the relationship work, it will fail. Yeah, it'll fail, fail, it'll fail. fail. Not that I've ever been in a long distance relationship, but a lot of my friends have. And... Have I? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of did it with Frenchie in the summer. Mm, yeah. It was horrible. I hated it. Um, Yeah. So I don't know. If they're not 100%, 120% committed to like your relationship, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't really speak from my own experience because I've never even had a boyfriend, but, like, my friends have been... But you have good experience. Like, you have good, like... Dating. Lessons, yeah. Situationships. All right, next question. Okay, Livy. So, I was contracted with a company, and this guy was, like, let's just say 10 plus years older than me, and he he, he love-bombed me. Moral of the story. And... Mm -hmm said all these promises and all these things as it goes and it got into the highs and lows of the relationship this that and the other and he ended up uh he did tell me that he was two years divorced and I know the answer to this is pretty much like just move on but I feel like I just keep hearing this and I'm looking for something he ended up keeping a kid for me my friend googled him and we found like the divorce records and all of that Anyway, so it became like, okay, we're going to stay friends. We ended up, we, we've we worked together in the past. Da, da, da. And I'm just still so attached, even though, like, we're no contact. I'm trying so hard to, like, move forward. But the things he did were just so painful. And, you know, I'm trying to heal from that. But we, he was, like, trying so hard. He's like, no matter what, no matter what, I want to, like, keep you in my life. Let's mend things. We met up just to, like, be okay. And then he just did like we he went through all of that and then I was like asking for advice he's super short and then I was like hey can you answer this question like that's why I reached out like why would you be so short if you knew I was asking you a question I haven't heard from him now in a month and yeah so that's my tea girl never short. reach back out after you go no contact never reach no, back out and I know no it's so much easier said than done so much easier said than done yeah. speaking from experience but, like, you really just need to do cold turkey, like... And I get where you're, you're coming Because you're just going to get disappointed from. and hurt over and over again. Yeah, and I get where you're coming from, where you're like, I just, like, literally cannot get this man out of my head. Like, I just want to speak to him, but it's like, you can't... Like, honestly, it's just give that time and, like, ride that out. Honestly, if I was you, do you know what I really do? 
I'd start going on dates and I'd start getting my focus off of this man. I feel mm-hmm. like he's so heavy in your energy. One, he's a fucking asshole. Loser. Showed you he's a fucking asshole. And, and he's so, like old too. It's he's old. Like he's he's old. He oh, let's like not he's... us again with the old. Like we got canceled the last time. We... If he has a kid, he's old. Yeah. Well, okay. There we well, go. Well, like, I mean, you can have a kid against. at 18. Yeah, you, so can, get, you guess, can have children. But this girl's not eight. She said 10 years older than <laughs> right. her. So we're assuming... He's old. If he's 10 plus years older than you, he's old compared to you. Exactly. Let's put it that way. That's what we're not. Don't trying. cancel us for being ageist again. <laughs> again. We got canceled for being ageist once. I don't need it happening again. And that was the first time I learned what ageist meant. But here's the thing is, <laughs> you need to go out there. You need to go on dates. You need to go have some fucking fun. Clearly, he's in your energy field. I think it'll be so good for you to get out there, go on dates, experience new dick, new men. Fuck this old loser. Not actually, but like. Get him out of there. Fuck him. No, yeah. Fuck him. Don't yeah. fuck him. Right. Like, fuck him. Right. You know? <laughs> right. All right. And that's what, that's my opinion. Uh, yeah. Agreed. And also on top of that, something that works really well for me when I, like, start thinking about people who I had feelings for in the past, like, people who I, like, couldn't get my mind off of, I remind myself of all of the horrible shit they did to me. I remind myself of all of the horrible things they did to me, said to me. All of those types of things, like, that made me just feel, like, worse than I've ever felt in my life. And I'm like, oh, wait, this man's a fucking piece of shit. He's a fucking loser. He's Uh immature. He's a narcissist. Mm -hmm. You just remind yourself of all the horrible qualities of him, all the horrible things he did to you. And then you're like, wait, this man ain't shit. Like, yeah, sure, like, it's gonna take me a minute to, like, get over this situation. Like, but if the more you remind yourself about how... A big, how big of a piece of shit he is, the quicker you're going to get over it. Because the more you romanticize what happened in the past... Or what could have been. Or what could have been, even more importantly, the more you're going to be hung up on this guy for a long time. Like, yeah. You just need to, like, really remind yourself of how awful he treated you. And then yeah. that's just, like, a good sign. And also, rely on your friends to hold you accountable. Sometimes you have to, like, learn lessons on your own. And, like, you have to, you know, whatever. But, like... If you really are serious about going, like, cold turkey, like, cutting this guy off, like, tell your friends, if I, if you ever catch me, like, acting up, acting the fool, like, giving this man, like, any sort of, any of my energy, fucking check me. Tell me about myself. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Okay. There's this guy that I've liked for about six years now, and recently I've started to like him even more because we were talking more frequently for a while, and it was really nice. But I stopped talking to him as much because my friends don't like him for things he's done in the past that they just won't tell me about, Um, so I don't really know. Um, And I can't really handle getting hurt by him, Um, so I, I don't really know what I should do. Like, should I keep the last bit of sanity and dignity that I have left or should I make a move and you know risk whatever comes from talking to him I feel like he's like you know I really really trust cut us both up she was like shut the fuck up um heard I heard behind anyways I think if you're I think sharp I think if you're um service industry things 86 uh, (laughs) I think if you're not in a good mental state Fuck these men. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't. You know yourself the best. So yeah. if you don't think you're going to handle it, don't even dip yourself into it. No. Because like I. But also at the same time, your friends are fake for not telling your you. Your friends are fake as fuck. Yeah. Like that's. If there's a reason. A. They're, they're hiding something from you. Because. Yeah. Who knows what. My mind immediately goes to like. Maybe they don't want you to know. Maybe they're saying this because they're jealous of you. And they don't want you to have this man. Yeah. Because they also want him. Or B. See, I thought he was an assaulter, but we're two different minds. Yeah. Or I was going to go there too. Like maybe he did something, but like, why would they not tell her? This is my thing is like, if you knew something about someone and I was like, well, tell me. And you were like, I can't. I'm like, you're a bitch. Like, oh, what are you? I've I, dealt with that in my past. I No, I don't deal with that. Like, no. If, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like if you're not going to talk shit about like, if you know something about someone, you're not going to tell me. I've been seeing this TikTok pop up on my For You page so much recently, and it's so true. Like, this is, like, distantly connected to what I'm trying to say, but, like, pretty much what the TikTok is, is, like, this girl talks about how you really know if you have, like, a true friend, if they will, like, stand up for you and also, like, treat the people who hurt you differently, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing worse than one of your best, like, you have a best friend, let's say, and they're, like 
best friends with somebody who, like, completely fucked you over, went out of their way to, like, wreck your life, wreck your relationship with someone, anything like that. Like, really went out of their way to do something super hurtful. And they just kind of, like, play devil's advocate and they won't, like, stand up for you. That's not a true friend. No. I understand if it's, like, a situation where you got your feelings hurt by something that somebody did, like, not purposefully. You know, that's kind of, like, a different game. It's a very gray area. Yeah. But, like, going back to that, like, if your friends are not, I don't know. Ride or die. There's people that I've met, like... I like I'm so ride or die for my friends that I'm like I'll personally choke yeah, the you're fuck. You're a very loyal friend. I am so way. oddly loyal. Actually, it's like in the weirdest way. Like if so, like what I'm thinking of the person that hurt Tim, and I'm like I will single handedly like take down everyone around. Like it just, and I just could never imagine a world where you're like oh like I know something and I'm not gonna tell yeah. you. Like we're not those girls. Mm-mm. We'll I've, never like, be I've them. I've pretty much always been that way as well. With that, like so- yeah. sometimes I found myself in situations where I find myself caught between two people. But that's because I think that the situation has nothing to do with me and that the other person didn't purposefully do it to, like, spite the other person, yeah. which makes it a little bit different. But there is nothing more frustrating than when somebody, like, literally tries uprooting your life, tries ruining your life, like, does so much to hurt you over and over and over again. And it's clearly not a mistake and clearly not, like, just, like, stupidity. And then, like, your best friend, like, still sticks up for them. Yeah. Because that's happened to me before and there is nothing fucking worse. I love how her question was, should I give this man a chance? And we're over here like, (laughs) fuck your friends. (laughs) Fuck your friends. fuck the man, but, like, fuck Fuck your your friends friends. for being fake. Fuck your friends. All right, next question. We're only doing two more. Hey, Liv, I was wondering if you could give me some advice on what to do because my parents got divorced when I was really little and I do have a stepmom and I love her but my mom started dating recently and there's this one guy that she introduced us to a few months ago and then the second time that like we've ever seen him he came over our house and basically has not fucking left and I'm a little angry and upset because I feel very uncomfortable like I spend most of the time day in my room because like I don't want to go downstairs because that's like where he like he normally stays and that was a few months ago when he moved in but I still feel very uncomfortable because I'm still a child I'm in high school and I try talking to my mom about it and she calls me selfish and is like oh well you just don't want me to love anybody and like you don't want me to be with anybody else like no it's not that I just don't want him like living here like, I don't know how to explain it to her. I'm going to leave this one to you because... No, you're going to answer, too. Um, no, no. I know. Tim you comes... You have experience yeah, in this. Tim comes from a healthy family. I am lucky enough that my family. parents are still together, so... Lucky bitch. I can't really speak on that. My biggest thing is... Okay, I remember when my mom first started dating, and I was like... I think I... We forget sometimes that, like, they're human, too, and, like, they're adults, and, like, they're going to fall in love. And with falling in love means, like, they're going to act like an annoying bitch like you know when the girlfriend like that your friend just falls in love with the first time and she's like oh my god mm-hmm. and like she's dropping all her friends for the boyfriend which is not right which is not right but she's like in love so she kind of has those glasses on you know that mm-hmm. she's not it's not registering to her so that's like what I dealt with with my mom like when I was a senior in high school and she like had just started dating for the first time and she was like never home and I like lived by myself basically and I was alone And it's really difficult and there's really nothing you can do because your mom has her mind made up and it, it, that's super uncomfortable to like come home to that too. Like that's not, you know, but it's like when your parents are in love, they're not going to see that unfortunately, Mm -hmm. like with anybody in love. And so I would tell with that, my biggest advice would just be stay in your room. I know this is like not what you want to hear, but there's really nothing bigger that you can do about it cuz like your mom has her mind made up, you know? I will say though, I will I do feel like it is fair and I do feel like it is your right to sit down with your mom and have a serious conversation and be yeah. like I feel like we can like meet in the middle in a way, you know, like Yeah. I don't know. Maybe have Wait, did she say that he moved in full time? Like, basically, yeah. After how long? Like, she the second time you met him. She met him. There's just, I don't... That's, like, that's a little weird, in my opinion. No, like, and but, like, I get that. Moving in after the second time you meet him, like... Yeah. That's a lot. It is. And, like, your mom should recognize that. But, but also, at the when same they're time, in love. she's the adult. Yeah, when like, you're, like, in a loveless marriage, and then you've, like, experienced love for the first time in, what, like, 20 years? Mm-hmm. 
I don't know. That's where it's difficult. It's hard. It's hard and it's really hard on the kids. So I would just like, I'd have that serious conversation and if that doesn't go well, just like, I think, I apply think, to college. Like, I, I don't think know. you also need to word it to your mom and just be like, I don't feel like I ever get any more alone time with you anymore. Yes. And like, I miss those days. That, I feel like that will register more with her because then it will like show to her that like you miss her and you miss like spending time with her alone and you miss things how they were. Yeah. And I feel like she'll be more receptive to that. I, the thing is I've like done that to my mother in that position and it's just like, like, you know, so mm. yeah, but honestly try cause try your mom might not be my mom. So that's that. Last question. How do you get your skin so clean after using so much makeup products? <laughs> I just love like all the questions we've had. It's like, first of all, a little backhanded. Um, she's like, with all that fucking makeup on your face, how do you clean it? Um, like I use makeup remover. I luckily get a lot of PR from skincare brands that I use that I love. So I, I can't. It's so funny to go from like and let your mom and have a serious conversation to being like, and so I use CeraVe <laughs> on my face. Like it's just such a 180. What do you use to keep your fucking skin clear? Because I, I break out a lot. I have acne. So I just cover it with pounds of foundation. So what do you do, um, Mr. I will start by saying I don't wear as much makeup as she does. What the fuck does not, that mean? Not, not saying that she, like, covers it. Like, I don't wear it that often. You know, like, I, I wear it more for, like, special you occasions. You wear it, like, five times a week. You wear it to work. Some days to work. Some days I don't. I only wear makeup, like, five days a week. Really? I think, like, five, six. I try and get six. myself one day a week where I'm not wearing it. I would say... I also, my-, my fucking job, people! No, I'm not coming for you. You kind of wear. No, I'm not. I'm just saying, like... I also just started wearing makeup. Yeah, he just started doing makeup. Like, I just started doing makeup, like, a few months ago. And so, yeah, I mean, I I don't really, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I, I take good care of my skin. Like, I have, like, a good skincare routine. Like, I do my best to, like, not sleep in my makeup. Oh, I never sleep in my makeup. Bad for you. Um, yeah, I mean, double cleanse. That's very important because... What does that mean? Like, cl- clean your face twice after you take off makeup. That's a thing. Yeah, you don't double cleanse. No, I felt like I made it up in my head. You know, like, sometimes I would, and I was like, why are you doing that? Well, okay, for example, I have been using makeup wipes, which I know are bad for you. Ah! I, I, don't, <laughs> I just bought an oil cleanser, so I'm about to, like, change that. But what I would do is I would use a makeup wipe or, like, my slow, my slow, my micellar. 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 Water. It's not micellar. Micellar. I don't care. Whatever. With a, Who gives with a fuck? A, uh, cotton round and like take off my makeup and then I'll wa- use my CeraVe and wash my face so you know what I mean <laughs> sorry like I double don't... cleanse because the first time you, you oh, wash your face oh that okay so I use my makeup balm and then I wash my face yeah I thought that's you meant, double cleanse I thought you meant like wash your face Twice? wash it no. again but I think what's the, mo- what's the best way to do it and like I just bought my first oil cleanser so like this is whatever I've heard oil cleansers are great for taking off makeup and it's also good for, like, really cleaning out your pores and, like, getting all the gunk out of your face. So oil cleanse first, get all the makeup off with the oil cleanser, and then use your regular water-based cleanser afterwards. I've always said that. All right, you guys, that's it for our questions. That's it for this week's episode. I'm Livy. I'm Timothy. You guys can find me everywhere at she is Livy. That's YouTube. That's Instagram. That's TikTok. Um, make sure to like the podcast, subscribe, listen to all the episodes, rate me five stars. Guys, slide in my DMs. Let me know what you think about Tim on this week's episode. I'd love to hear it. But also, Timothy, John, Patrick, where can they find you? You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Timothy John Patrick. Yes, he's about to hit 10K, so let's get him there. Yeah. First person to get me there gets a smooch. <laughs> gets a kiss on the lips. All right. We love you guys. Have love a great... Love you so much. Love you so much. I love ya. I love ya. So much. Oh, I love ya. I love ya. Oh, I love ya. Oh, so much. Wait. We have an issue where... We, we have an issue where we will bark it. Like, we're huskies. Like, we literally are like husky dogs. You know how they like howl and bark? We do that at each other. That's weird. Why am I including that? Whatever. Love you guys. Love you so much. That's a bad heart. Well, we need a thumbnail regardless, so. Wait, we look gorgeous then. I feel like.
get the fuck out of my way, you know? All right, bye guys.